Nigeria's last 2023 general election, which produced President Bola Tinubu, reflects the will of the electorate despite widespread irregularities. That is the message of the 2023 country reports on human rights practices by the United States. The report, published by the Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, U.S. Department of State, stresses human rights practices and violations in different countries, including Nigeria. Quote, National elections were widely reported to have reflected the will of voters despite technical and logistical difficulties and some irregularities, end quote. According to the report, many independent observers assessed the results of the presidential, legislative, and state-level elections during the year reflected the will of voters despite reports of voter suppression, vote buying, campaigning at polling stations, lack of ballot secrecy, violence, and intimidation. Speaking about the corruption in the government, the report advised the current administration to address issues of corruption in governance. Well, joining us in the studio is the Executive Director, Center for Social and Economic Rights, Nelson Ekujumi. Good morning. Good thank morning. You, thank, thank you for, for having me. Us. Good morning, Nigerians. Now, apart from all that was said by this report, opposition parties, uh, you know, raising concerns or raising eyebrows that, first of all, they are surprised that um, the U.S. is given these kind of reports. Recall that even at that period, a lot of them were sending messages to the U.S. to come see what is going on, come and intervene, some sort. And despite all of that, the U.S. is saying this election reflected the will of the people despite some irregularities and also some said some other things that we'll be discussing in the course of the program. Now you were part of those who observed the election. From your standpoint, when you look at the report, do you share the same view with this the, the, the report and also what do you make of what the opposition parties are saying? <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, the report stated the obvious and the obvious is that one, that election passed the democratic test of Nigerians. That is the will of the people reflected. That report in that election, the 2023 general election, also passed the judicial tests because it was subjected to our judicial scrutiny. Mm. And we are all witnesses to it, what came out. We saw that those that went to court just went there you know, to, for fun. They went there without any evidence. The Electoral Act, that is the Bible of our elections, identified or highlighted basic points, uh, basic uh, landmarks in the conduct of election. You have the polling units, you have the uh, World Coalition Center, you have the Local Government Coalition Center, you have the coalition centers, where results from the polling units you know, generate and move upwards. Mm. But lo and behold, even while the results were being collated, it's a fact that political parties who lost came out openly calling for cancellation yeah. for reasons that is best known to them. And even when they went to court, we all saw it, where the judges themselves lampooned them that you claimed to have deployed 133,000 uh, party agents mm. to the polling units. Not one result sheet did you produce to counter the result released by INEC to show that INEC you know, uh, manipulated the result. We all saw all the campaign of uh, blackmail and calumny against INEC. But at the end of the day, it all turned out to nothing. So the report by the U.S. Uh, government, by the U.S. agents, is well in tandem with the realities of what transpired in the last 2023 election. Because for some of us, my organization also issued a statement because we deployed over 150 observers. Mm. And we were also members of several other networks. Yes. And we issued a report or a commending Nigerians, commending INEC for a job well done. Mm. And like we all know, there's no perfect election anywhere yeah. in the world. Mm. Well, the, the results sort of contradict itself when it says that it, uh, the 2023 election reflects the will of the people. And in another breath, it said that um, it actually had uh, you know, irregularities, witness irregularities, violence, voter, voter suppression, and all of that. You know, I'll be asking, what modalities do they use in arriving at this, uh, this conclusion? And uh, what are the, you know, the, the what, what exactly did they do, you know, to make sure that, yes, they were able to, you know, arrive at this report? 
No, the, re the report didn't contradict itself when it says there were voters inducement, suppression, violence. You know, in election matters, the law even recognizes that it must be conducted in substantial compliance. It didn't say total. Because if you say total, it means it must be 100%. It recognized the human failure that getting to a polling station on election day, some of the electoral officers might come late. Even the voters themselves might come there looking for whom to induce them. You know, there could be violence at the polling station. So the reports, you know, spoke generally about it. But for me, my only grouse with the report will have been, uh, maybe because I've not read it in totality, for them to identify where my practices occurred, mm. you know, rather than a blanket statement. Because uh, we monitor the election, we observe the elections, we deployed observers, we interface with other observers, we monitor the, through the media, because, you know, you can't be everywhere. Yeah. And uh, if, I will tell you for free, that is our best election so far. We have seen a remarkable improvement in our elections from 2015. This election was on like the elections we conducted under former President Tunisia Gomba Sanjo and Morisiwu, where results were written in, in inside an office, where election petitions went to tribunals. And tribunals, as well as uh, the courts, discovered that uh, uh, palm kernel was used to turn print, you know, <laughs> ballot papers. Nobody could, you know, point that out in this election because nobody came out with such, you know, uh, allegations and even substantiated it. So these elections, from all indices, is our best so far, but we are looking ahead to 2027 to do better. Yeah, the report also corroborated what you have said, saying that uh, the spread of the result of the poll across party lines was better than uh, previous elections uh, that we have conducted uh, in Nigeria. But uh, the opposition parties seem to differ on that. You said that you wish that the report was able to break down some areas where these irregularities happen. And these opposition parties are laying claim to videos that were even on social media of uh, how some persons were denied you know, access to voting areas, some persons being induced and all of it. Can't we see that as some of the irregularities also? No, absolutely. You, we can see that as irregularity. And, you know, like, I, like we stated earlier on, no election is perfect because mm -hmm. elections is being conducted by human beings. But they are saying that that should count for something. Well, you, you know, the, I said, I told you earlier on, substantial, comp even if there are irregularities, the law looks at it that this irregularities, is it enough to void what happened if an election has taken place? and you have irregularity in 0.5%, will you now throw away 99.95%? Go and act anywhere in the world. There's no way it's done. Mm -hmm. So the opposition parties, it, you know, it's sad that uh, we have politicians who subscribe to the democratic process only when it suits them. Because once you submit to our democratic process, it means you submit to the adjudication process as well. Because when the election takes place, there are always mechanisms for you to seek redress. Mm -hmm. So when you have lost, and instead of you to wait to seek redress, you are calling for an outright cancellation of a process that you signed into till the end. You want it to be you know, abrogated halfway. It does not show sincerity. It does not show patriotism. Ordinarily, if I have submitted to a process, at the end of the day, if I'm not satisfied, the law permits you to go to the tribunal. Mm. But in this case, they didn't even want to go to the tribunal. We saw the drama at the National Coalition Center, mm -hmm. where one of the uh, party uh, agents was trying to disrupt the process yeah. until, you know, he, he, he worked out. Dino Melaye. Yeah. Yes, Dino Melaye. So it is not out of place for the opposition parties to continue to cry over spilt milk. We have gone past the way... Nigerians... They can't. haven't, obviously. No, they, 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 it's their right. Mm -hmm. you, you can't begrudge them. If they like, let them continue to you know, whip over it in 2027. It's within their rights. We, we have no business with that. But as Nigerians, who were part of the process, and we've seen that those who lost explored all the avenues available within the system, except if they are telling us that when elections are held and I'm not satisfied... I should bring down the house, mm. Mm. and no society will operate that way. Do you want to? Do you still want to describe it as a right? You know, for those who do not, you know, wish to move on, you know, from 2023 elections, where majority of them believe that their mandate was stolen, and the next thing they want to see is that the person who is on, who is uh, at the 
you know, Apple G, uh, the, the M of Affairs, is not, you know, representing them. And they just don't want to hear anything, any good news about this government. They don't want to hear anything good news about Nigeria. They just want Nigeria to come down. Do you say that is within their right? No, it's within their right to wish that way. But you and I know very well that we operate a society, we are a society being governed by laws. That wish of this, if they bring it into acts that violate the Constitution, the law will take care of it. So for them to, if, if some of them like, they want to stay in their house and weep from morning till night, it's within their rights. There's nothing I can do about it. So for those of us who want the best for Nigeria, we have seen some of the lapses, you know, we have identified it, and we are saying, look, these shortcomings that we have identified, how can we do better? But we have seen that from 2015 down to 2023, we have made remarkable progress. You can see the outcome of the election, even the legislative as well as the governorship uh, seats, mm. reflects a rainbow you know, arrangement, sort of. Mm. You see all parties in the National Assembly. What does that tell you? It tells you that's what the people want. So if democracy is about the voice of the people, and like we always say, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Yeah. If that is what the people want, if any other person wants otherwise, so long as he or she or that group is not breaking the laws, let them run with it. All right. Yeah, now, right. You, you, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, the election tested the passed the test of democracy. Absolutely. And uh, the, the report also wants, shows that line, saying that uh, no party dominated the election, but opposition parties think otherwise. They are talking about the need to deepen democracy and that uh, they are trying to ensure that we do not have a one-party state as it is right yeah. now. And that is why they are, you know, trying to throw up all of these uh, Well, well what, what, those uh, tantrums, if, if, you, if, I, if I will be permitted to use that, mm -hmm. are not what deepens democracy. What deepens democracy are acts that, you know, expose intellectualism. Mm -hmm. As an opposition party, elections have been conducted where you express the satisfaction, you explore the re uh, dispute resolution mechanism, you got the judgments, and the judgment, you know, came out that look, the election was conducted in substantial. You saw one of the petition, uh, one of the petitions at the uh, at the Supreme Court. Mm. He took the uh, the lead, the head of the panel, less than a minute to read judgment that this was a mere miss of time. Yes. Yes. So <clears throat> if you want to deepen democracy, it is for you to look at whatever the government of the day is doing verify it or authenticate it. If it's a right on course, you say, oh, this is beautiful, this is what we would have done if Nigerians have voted for us. And if you differ, you come up with your alternative position, you know, based on logic and fact. It's not for you to just come, up, oh, that policy is not good, so which way forward? Mm -hmm. If you condemn one uh, policy or one program of government, which should we look at as a better alternative? Okay. Because you can't tell me that uh, the baby I'm carrying is looking ugly, so I should knife the baby to death. Are you going to produce another baby for me within uh, a second? Absolutely no. So I will live with what I have. I will look at how do I nourish this baby to become beautiful, to have a good life, and you know, plan ahead for him or her. Mm. So telling me because I, I gave birth to a baby and you don't like maybe the skin of the baby, the color of the skin, that oh, throw away the baby. No, I won't do that. Mm. Yeah, after the 2023 general election, we had, you know, two off-cycled elections, and we still have two coming. Uh, I think um, Kogi... Kogi we had three. We had three. Kogi, Bayosa, and, Bayosa, and, Kogi, Bayosa, and Imo. And Imo State, yeah. yeah. So we, we sort of, you know, experienced some anomalies in the previous elections, the Kogi and, uh, and all of those elections. Do you think that we, we have learned from the 2023 elections going by the recent uh, off-cycle election that we had? Well, the, the greatest uh, good that has happened to our democracy so far is the ability of the electoral umpire to be thinking out of the box. You recollect that there was a time in this country where 500 people were registered in a polling unit, and at the end of the elections, 520 would vote. You know? But now we have seen a situation whereby our voters' turnout has dropped drastically. Why? Mm. Because the electoral empire has introduced technology. At first, they introduced card reader. Mm. They introduced PVC. 
Now, with the, with the card reader then, if you are not the owner of the card, the machine will not authenticate you to vote. Yeah. From the card reader, they've graduated to the beavers. Yes. So it has become a stage, a stage whereby once you are, the beavers are unable to recognize you either facially or by the thumb, you know, before they were using, uh, for the card data, we were using incident form. Yeah. And because it was, you know, vulnerable to manipulations, they had to get it in that. So with the electoral umpire, they are trying all their possible best, you know, to up the ante. But some other stakeholders in that, don't forget that our democracy is not, uh, does not involve only the electoral umpire. Yeah. There are other stakeholders. We have the yeah. voters, the political yeah. parties, security agencies, media, you know, observers. So some of the other stakeholders are not doing well. So those are the areas that we, we've identified, and we are calling for investment, you know, to bring out better products from these other stakeholders. You talk about the political parties. This uh, win, at, win, win at all cost syndrome, mm -hmm. do whatever it takes to get there, you know. We must just see that if public office is about service, you know, mm -hmm. we, we need to bring out our best and let them think that they are going there is how to make the society better rather than how to, you know, uh, enrich themselves personally. So the off-circle elections we have, we have had in Ogi and, you know, I will tell you for free, the electoral empire has maintained its professionalism, has maintained its unbiasedness, but the stakeholders, because I was in Kogi, I monitored the election in Kogi. <laughs> yes, I was in Kogi State. Mm. We had colleagues in uh, Bayelsa and Imo. And you know, some of the news we got from some places were unpalatable, yeah. people being induced monetarily to vote. And for me, I think persons who are induced, the question I always ask, months or years before the election, we know we are sitting down here now. Only an unborn baby knows there's, will tell you he doesn't know there's a, an election coming up in a do state in September, mm -hmm. and another one coming up, gubernatorial election, and another one coming up in on those states in November. November. So how can an adult, uh, somebody who is above 18, get to a polling unit and is waiting for somebody? Because I'm a, I've been an observer all these years, and I've seen it, and it's painful. That how do we get out of it? A man will get to the polling station and will wait. He'll be looking right, looking left. Here I am. I am for sale. I ask, how much we suffer in four that... years of your life? Isn't that a reflection of uh, we not doing enough with uh, the matters of voter education, making them understand that they have power here that they can wield? As Ab it is. Absolutely. That's I agree, I agree on with the you. one hand, that on the always... parts of uh, civil society organizations like yours and even political parties, I, I don't know. It's like we're not doing enough. Yes, I, I agree with you. We are not doing enough. It's, a, it's, an, it's an assignment we all have on our hands. And whatever it takes for us to plow our heads into it, we must, you know, never be tired of doing it. Because democracy is about we, not I. If I'm the only sane man in a society and 10 people are insane to vote another way, it's about numbers. Majority carries the day. Right. So our investment in, you know, in voters' education, we need to increase it. We need to, you know, enlighten the people the more, make them realize that, look, it's about our life, not only your life. Because whatever you do for your own personal interests, you know, endangers all of us. So we need to increase our investment in voters' education to make the voters aware. Because if not for the fact that the electoral empire has done its own part, in the past, we've seen situations they will tell you, if you like, you vote. If you like, you don't vote, I'll win. But now, the voter is king. Mm. That is why the voter has been induced. But in you being king, do you realize the power you possess that it is not something you must put for sale only on election day? Well, the, the, king, is actually, the king actually decides how he wants to wield his power. Well, we must appeal to the king not to misuse that power in order not to endanger us. Because at the end of the day, it's still in his own interest if he wields that power in the right, right way. way in yeah, the right absolutely, direction. absolutely. As it is. But most importantly right now is that um, how do we move from here, especially the fact that, one, we are always seeking validation from persons outside the country. For instance, like I mentioned earlier, we are often calling the international community to come pay attention to some of the things we are doing, look at uh, the election, 
how people were posting videos and, you know, tagging the U.S., look at this and all of those issues. Do we really need that? That's on the one hand. And then how do we improve upon uh, the technology and everything that we put in place to entrench democracy and even move our electro electoral processes forward? Yes, one, we people will do that. For me, I believe the, they are still suffering from what uh, a late uh, reggae legend Bob Marley calls uh, mental slavery. You know, there was a time, I think I was in this studio, and um, it was this uh, call by the American embassy that uh, any politician who is found wanting in the conduct of the elections yes. will be denied visa. And I'm like, is America ever? Is it by force I must go to America? What, what sort of uh, intimidation is that to a people? For me, I see it as an insult. We don't need validation from any outsider. In fact, when I was called to come and speak on this U.S. report, I was like, I'm going to tell your producer. I will send you my own report, my organization report. Then let's speak about it, because the American uh, agency that you talked about, I don't know how many people they deployed. I'm sure they couldn't have deployed as much as we deployed physically, because the report was more about reports, reported, reported. We witnessed mm. physical uh, activity at the polling stations as well as the coalition And they must have included your report and some other Yes, and some other reports. So we can speak better to the yeah. issues. So this looking for validation from outside, we, we appreciate them, but that the world has become a global village. And we must also not run away from the fact that these same international uh, agencies or government are also contributors to our democracy because yeah. they empower the stakeholders. They, they, they fund trainings for the police, fund training for INEC, give them assistance in whatever uh, method they want, but seeking validation for a process that we Nigerians, we are not under any you know, colonial rule, that we are we, we as endowed as they are, we have set the rules and we have taken our pain to check how far we have done. We had an election, Nigerians went to the polls, we know there, there will definitely be shortcomings with regards to human conduct. Human beings are not perfect, it's only God. And at the end of the exercise, those who were dissatisfied, even though when they were calling for cancellation, including a former from a president of Nigeria, I was one of, yes, yeah. well, former president Olusha Gomba yeah. yeah. I was aghast. Pre former president Olusha Gomba calling on President Muhammadu Buhari to commit treason, telling him to cancel the election. When you know, on that law, President Muhammadu Buhari does not have the pass to do that. I've never seen that type of a, a call from such an elder statesman. And it speaks volume about, about that man's character. Mm. But after the election has been conducted and the results have been announced, this seeking of a lot of uh, organizations release their reports. Because even as, a, as a, an INEC accredited observer organization, you are mandated to submit a report on what you saw yeah. and to make recommendations. Because you know, INEC wants a transparent and, and all inclusive process. So the seeking validation from outside the country for what we are endowed, we are qualified to do, I, won't, I don't think that is the right way to go. But for those who are doing that, it's within their rights. Let them have their G. Um, improving our processes. Uh, improving our processes, yes. Uh, one of the areas I think we, 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 we suffered you know, during the last election was in the area of technology. For example, on election day, I was on the field. Some persons came, and they will tell you, I can't locate my polling units. And you pick up, pick up your phone, and they gave us some, you know, um, some links to their website. And you type on the website, and you can't go through. You just use guess. It's OK, this is 02, all the polling units, 02, this is 03. 06 must be down there, you know? So identifying those areas, we need to Im Im uh, improve on the bandwidth. If Maybe the ICT people, who, you know, no, no. can understand better. Then we need to also improve on, you know, the level of education and sensitization around the electoral matters. And this should not be something we we'll do days to the election. It should be, it should be like a, a missionary work. It should be something we we'll do every day, mm -hmm. so that our children, you know, will start, you know, getting familiar with the process when they grow up. They will know that oh, in the curriculum of school. absolutely. <laughs> Part of the civic education, how do we conduct elections? Who are the stakeholders in the electoral process? You know, we should you know, do this and many more. In that way, 
people that you know improve that process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you look at the just concluded um, primary election by the APC and some other parties in different states, um, on those states, uh, for uh, precisely the political parties, you know, deployment of electoral matters, I mean, electoral materials and all of that, you know, they had a lot of issues. Is that to vindicate? Is that to vindicate INEC that INEC is really, really doing well? Compared to what the stakeholders are not able to do. If if you if you have followed our electoral process, you give thumbs up to INEC anytime, any day, because they have done very well. You can see I was personally I was in Undo for some of the party primaries, and the one thing that you know uh, surprised me was that even on the day of the primaries, the electoral officers came to the various uh, centers late. That's within. A political party. You can now imagine what INEC is doing with regards to conducting elections, even in one state, for example. The, the sheer volume of resources, personnel that would have been deployed. And I can tell you for free, I don't think the political parties themselves, the electoral officers that de they are deploying, that they have the type of trainings INEC personnel do have. And that is why I said one of the areas we need to improve upon is in the areas of you know uh, investments right. in our political party as well as voters. We need to make our political parties become experts right. in electoral matters, not only about our, uh, take ten naira vote hmm. for my party. All right, we'll leave the conversation here now. Nelson Ekujumi, uh, Executive Director, Center for Social and Economic Rights. Thank you for your time on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Right.